Welcome to this episode of Online Confidential and I'm super excited with our special guest today because I love flying, as he says, in the pointy end of the plane. And we are going to dive into that today in this episode of Online Confidential, where we take you behind the scenes of secret ad manager business and take you miles high in the sky in comfort in this episode. So Steve Hoy, welcome to this show. I'm so excited to have you as our guest today. Great to be with you. Thank you. Now, really for those of you who don't know Steve, he's here in Australia and we are focusing more on just Australian talk here when it comes to frequent flyer points. Um, but those of you who are in other countries will also be able to get a lot of inspiration from this as well and to see how easy it is to actually fly first class. I don't know about you, but I remember getting onto planes, walking past and you'd go past that little first class section and you're kind of looking down and you're going, how did they do it? And then you go back to your little economy seat with your knees. And then especially when you're flying like a long haul, as we do from Australia to get anywhere else in the world, and you walk past that sort of first class section where their beds are there and their mattresses. And it's like, oh. I was like, ah. Oh. So, Steve, let's first of all, I love your background there. So, tell us a bit about that. We were talking about that before. That is an amazing setup. Guys, imagine flying like that, right? Steve, tell us about that yeah. cabin. It's an actual kind of cabin, isn't it? it, it it's so huge. So, think of it as like basically oh. like a small room where they have a bed set up here permanently and, and right behind my head. It's a little sort of like sofa chair. So yeah. you basically have a bed in a chair just for you the whole flight, the whole time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh that is just amazing. When you look at just the economy and it's just like a little and you're squeezed in that. And so how, like, what are we talking like points wise to fly like that? Yeah. So sing this is the Singapore A380 first class suite of which there's only six on board. Wow. Uh, the easiest way to get on board and actually really affordable is to fly simply to Singapore one way and you can get it for about 93,500 points each right. way. Right. So okay. That's the first class saver. 93,500 points is really easy to get hold of. And is there any cash to pay with that as well or that's just points? Uh, that's just points plus there's a little bit of taxes to be paid. Okay. So we put a like, little bit of taxes. Taxes might be four or $500. Mm -hmm. or so but this this flight will probably sell for five to seven thousand dollars one way so for that so little suite before, wow yeah seven hours of flight time costing seven hundred dollars so basically it's going to cost you a thousand dollars an hour if you pay with money yeah or interesting if you do it with points wise it's only going to cost you thirteen thousand five hundred points per hour which Wow. Easy, 1, points. <laughs> yep, it certainly is. And like for us who are, who are business owners and when you're paying contractors, business expenses and all those kind of things, you rack up those points pretty quick. Like I've just um, in January flew family of six, uh, Brisbane to LA and back all using points. So oh, nice. it was like brilliant. So um, I'm all for the points. And recently we just stayed at a resort in the deluxe room there, again, using points. So guys, I want you to tap into the benefits. Mm -hmm. If you're a business owner, these luxuries that you can have um, just by paying your regular business bills. So Steve, is there, how do we even get started with this? Is there a particular airline? Is there a particular credit card? Where do we start? Yeah, I think the number one place to start is to understand how cheap it is to use these points to fly. And we're talking about just using points to book flights and not an upgrade. So the right. upgrade is when you buy an economy ticket and you request an upgrade and you hope for the best. And right, they I give hate it to that. You, they I hate points. that. No, that's fraught with like <laughs> terror for me. The lottery. The lottery. Yes, yeah. it is. It is. Okay, so it's not buying the economy and then hoping for the upgrade. And then I've also made the mistake of buying the cheapest ticket and then you couldn't request an upgrade. So that no. really stung. Um, so just going straight off the bat, booking with your points. Yeah, that's Beautiful. right. Yeah. So I think that's first thing to clear up because that's a really common misconception of what yeah. it is. And then there's two ways of using points to fly. 
There's one which they call a reward flight or Qantas calls a classic and other airlines might call it saver or reward. And that's the way to use your points. And the second way, which is the way you shouldn't use it, is like points plus pay or pay with points where you convert your points into a really low value. And that is basically what's paying for your cash ticket at the current market rate. So the one to use is reward seat. And then that's when you get these awesome value because the magic about a reward seat is the number of points to fly is priced based on distance. It's not priced based on, on seasonality. So basically 365 days a year, if you're flying the same distance, it's always the same price. And you can book right. up to one year in advance. So I think the number one people to really understand is, is think of it like a different language because everyone would have had some experience of using points. Like they would have used it for upgrade, they would have used it for this and that. It's to forget about all that. But if you run a business, then you can actually make your business into like a points generating machine mm. and earn points for a specific purpose. And then that's to fly the pointy end. And you're going to get massive bang for buck. Massive as in like, oh, yeah, you, but you, well, the, especially if you're talking about Facebook ads where you can pay all those ads on your Amex card for zero fee, you can basically fly what I'm flying um, for just for the price of taxes, which is like $500. Imagine yeah. flying first class of $500. It's I <laughs> Having that, right? That would be amazing. Oh my gosh, I just want to go to Singapore just to experience that. So, yes, okay. Yes. So you mentioned um, Amex cards then. Is there a particular card? Is there something that you need to be careful of when it comes to selecting the right cards? Like some will have a high annual fee. Um, is yep. it is it worth it? And there's some lower annual fees. Let's talk about, yeah, cards that you yeah, should cool, and shouldn't cool. have. Yeah, good question. So I, I, the reason I prefer Amex cards, actually I prefer any card that has the highest earning rate. So Amex card earns more points than a Visa MasterCard. So generally, every every Australian dollar you put for an Amex card will get you on average about 1 to 1.25 airline points. And I mentioned airline points specifically because you earn generally earn some reward points first, and then that gets converted into airline points. Right. So on a Visa MasterCard stage, some cards might earn two or three reward points per dollar. But it is then, but then they convert into airline points at a, a two or three rate to one ratio. Right. So what I want people to understand is to compare cards, you want to see how many airline points you earn per dollar, not how many reward points, because otherwise it's just funny money in, in the middle. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's how many airline points you get. So I, I like Amex generally only because I earn more points per dollar. So no, the number one rule of all credit cards is you always have to pay them off in full. So you don't incur any interest because incurring interest will just destroy the whole value of your points. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the annual fees, it all comes into how much money you spend because annual fees can range from zero to the highest being $1,750. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and some people go, well, why would I pay $1,000, $1,700 when I could pay zero? It all comes down to how many points you earn per dollar because mm -hmm. the, the higher your credit card, which is the higher sort of like benefits, the more points you earn. And the points when using to fly business class at first, will more than pay off the annual fee like multiple times. Yeah. So that, that there's always going to be a trade-off. And, and I, I'll say if you spend over $250,000 a year on a credit card, then you can easily pay the highest annual fee and you'll still get more than your money back. Okay, awesome. So uh, to recap that, if you had a card that's generally got like a zero annual fee, mm. um, let's see if I understood it correct, versus a card that's got a $1,700 annual fee, as long yeah. as you've got that revenue coming through your business, but you will earn more points with that $700 annual fee card, yes? Correct, yeah, more points. Okay. And also more airline partners as well. 
Okay. You can transfer. I'll talk about that in a second. So not yes. to confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Okay. So if you've got the revenue there, the 1700 could well be worth getting into like a first class suite like that one, um, which I'm sure you would agree. 1700 who would not pay that for a long haul flight from Australia, right? Oh my gosh, any yeah. day, any day. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about airlines. Then we've got Qantas, we've got sort of Virgin, then we've got their uh, uh, um, alliance partners, is there an airline that's possibly better than the others? Better value points, more airlines to share with? Yeah, definitely. It's like, so every single airline charges a different number of points to fly to the same place. So just like how cash tickets, when you ever price a ticket, uh, every single airline will charge a different price. Well, but but cash prices normally up and down based on seasons and demand. Well, when you're looking at points prices, because earlier I, I mentioned that the points prices don't change based on the same distance. So every airline has a, a point price that's already been set. So some airlines charge more than others to fly to the same destination. So let me take, say, Sydney to London as an example. So you can fly, if you're using Qantas points to fly. So, so Qantas flies to London, so does Singapore Airlines, so does Emirates, and so does Etihad, Qatar, Cafe. So all these airlines fly there but they all charge a different number of points to fly. Mm -hmm. So just out of the top of my head, because I know these numbers pretty well, uh, a one-way business class flight for one person, uh, using Qantas points to fly on a Qantas plane, it's, it's 144,800 points. But if you use one way. Qantas points, yeah, for one, one way. way. Okay. That's using a Qantas points on a Qantas flight. And I mean, yeah. the reason I mentioned that, because there's only one Qantas flight. Actually, there's right. only two Qantas flights that fly to London, one from Perth and one from... Actually, there might be a couple more. But if you use your Qantas points to fly on a partner, like a One World partner, like British Airways or Malaysian or Qatar or Emirates, will we'll, we'll cost you more Qantas points. It will cost you 159,000 points to fly mm -hmm. one way. So you see that that's roughly about 10% difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you use your Singapore Airlines points to fly, it will only cost 161,000 points for the same flight. Um, and then lastly, if you use your Virgin points to fly on, say, Etihad or Qatar, it's only 139,000 points. So 178,000 points, the numbers get to you after a while. There's a lot so, of numbers. So I guess I just want to demonstrate yeah, every single airline charges slightly wow. different points to fly there. Uh, and mm -hmm. then, then we come to the taxes as well. Every airline charges slightly different taxes and fee. Yeah. So the magic is if you are flying to London a lot, you want to focus on the airline that charges you the lowest points to fly and the lowest taxes. And then, then create a, like a sort of like structure or, or system that earns you those points in the most effective way. And then you're basically always flying for the lowest price. Yeah. Possible. Yep. Okay, awesome. So it doesn't, is it, so it's not so much about choosing the right credit card that you're going to pay all your company bills on. It's a matter of like, okay, let's see which airlines are ones that you may prefer. Um, yeah. Maybe ones like for me being in Brisbane, I would look at like, okay, who flies out of Brisbane to locations that I might want to go to rather than having mm -hmm. to go down to Sydney wow. or Melbourne. Um, and then, um, yeah, which is the, the most value of you know points yeah. like you said because that was a bit of a difference there between like what was it the virgin one actually was the less points if you're flying on etihad or something versus yeah. some of the so other ones yeah percent difference in, in value yeah so i think what you say is exactly right so that, that means that everyone's a little bit different because people yeah. live in different states yeah uh, they, they want to go somewhere different so therefore i, I talked about the, the london example but then the, if someone wants to go to los angeles a lot then there'll be a whole different bunch of airlines, each with their own price. Mm -hmm. So, and if you want to go to Asia a lot, then then so every single airline, it's about finding a sweet spot that works just for you. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And so then for myself, I'm a Qantas girl. So we've got the Qantas company over here and that's where we're getting points. We book things with there. We use the Amex. And so we get whatever points, transfer them over to us personally. Am I doing the right thing there? <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're doing the right thing because I think if you're able to find flights on Qantas towards where you want to go, then mm -hmm. then that strategy works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So there's some credit cards, what they call is direct earn. So the credit card journey has the Qantas logo on it. That means yes. every single dollar you spend on that card, all your points will go to Qantas. And then mm-hmm. that's where they use book flights. And if you're successful in booking flights, then, then that strategy works. But if you're someone who wants to go to different places, but don't know if Qantas is the best airline for you or has the flights for you, then there's another system where you can earn points into say the, the Amex Rewards program. And then that can then transfer later to Qantas or Virgin or, or Emirates. And then that gives you much more variety of flexibility because you know how some different airlines charge different points. Yeah. Well, actually, different airlines also have different inventory. So mm-hmm. where Qantas may not have seats, maybe Singapore Airlines has seats on the dates to your destination. Or you can mix and match, fly Qantas one way because they got seats, fly Singapore or Virgin another way because they got seats. Because ah. then, then that, that strategy gives you way more options um, because you just never know where you want to go. It, it, exactly right and 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 like you said then if you do want to go somewhere different it's like oh well who flies from here and whatever so that's where I was going to go it's like should we have different cards should we have you know for example version points Qantas points is that diluting things down but what you said there was that you there could be Amex rewards that pulls mm-hmm. it all in there and then you can use them on the airline that you choose so is that actually a better option rather than saying I got my Qantas, I got my Virgin? Yeah, for for me, it's generally it all comes down to how much you can earn because mm-hmm. if, if you run a business that can put through a lot of money through the card, mm-hmm. then the way I think of it visually, uh, I'm not sure if everyone follows this. It's like a train. It's like a train or tram carriage. It has to be full before it takes off. So so what I mean is. If you're looking to fly, say, four people somewhere, you don't want to earn a little bit of points here, a little bit of points there, because mm. then you, you can't combine them. And if yeah. you want to fly four people, you need, you need four times the points needed to fly one way to that destination. Yeah. So you don't want to be a little bit of points, a little bit of points there. Uh, so maybe that's a long way to answer your question. But <laughs> generally, if you can put a fair amount of money through, then having a flexible program works better because mm-hmm. then you can then transfer your points to somewhere else later. Uh, but yeah. if you don't put much money through, then you want to stay with the one program because okay. then you can earn points through your credit card. You can earn Qantas points through shopping, earn them through maybe home loans or different bits. So therefore then all your points get collated in the same bucket and then you can use them. So I think that's, that's what, when, if people start spending more money, then the strategy gets a little bit more advanced because then you're trying to optimize for more flexibility, mm-hmm. more efficiency, and and just with airlines that more likely have the number of seats that you're looking for. Yeah, and I and I love that. Then yeah, you can go to other places because at the moment, if I've got Qantas points, then I wouldn't be able. Is Singapore Airlines, is that affiliated oh, with? Yeah. No. See, oh, I can't get on that fleet. <laughs> <laughs> so whereas having them in the Amex thing, then that's a much smarter way to be able to go on those airlines that you like. Is there an airline that you particularly love that is like, yes, this one is just like whole next level? Oh, yeah. So like the, this one for sure, this one of my favourites. Uh, yeah. Emirates First Class is another one. Obviously, obviously the first class products, of every airline is always better, but you get you, you get things like having ability to have a shower at 30, 40,000 feet, <laughs> which is like a unique experience because you never know when the turbulence gonna hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that could be really nasty if you have a fall in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. Oh my gosh. So, is there is there um, tell us, is there a is there a uh lap sash or a seatbelt in the shower in case you do hit turbulence or there's just handlebars that you got to hold on to <laughs> i think you just hold on because you do have a shower and, and the thing is that the shower water you, you've only have limited amount of time of water right, so you can okay. stop and start stop and start the water as you lava up and things like that yeah but okay. no what goes through my mind is always you no know, what if you're just got like shampoo your hair and that's all it is that's right yeah coming out shampoo in your eye trying to find find your seat <laughs> that's right because <laughs> uh, the experience it, that's worth having 
Absolutely. It is. And it's um, perks like this of like, you know, because running a business is hard work. So if you can have perks like this where you can, I was going to say, do the upgrade, but don't do the upgrade. Just get it with your business <laughs> point straight away. Lock in that business seat. Um, enjoy that. It's just, you know, makes, you know, makes some of it all worthwhile, right? It's just an experience that you can enjoy. And then when you yeah, can share yeah, it with your family members, like I was recently able to, um, it's just absolutely amazing. So we've covered favorite sort of um, airlines. Singapore Airlines there is amazing. Um, your recommendation points, having the different cards for our businesses, possibly looking at Amex rewards. What about yeah. like personally then, as we spend money on personal things, are there any personal cards that are any good? Like I've got the Qantas debit card and I try and use that um, that's linked to my points and everything but I know the points aren't as high there right I think it's like 0.25 points for every dollar spent mm -hmm. so like you were saying yeah. before you get a dollar for flight points or whatever for a dollar spent great value four times more so what can we do with our personal stuff that's going to complement business expenses yeah. perfect yeah I think the key word is complement because you want your business points and your personal points really going to the same bucket because yeah. the whole idea is try to have as many points that you can use to fly and not have all these different buckets everywhere. So on a personal side, there obviously is Amex cards and Visa MasterCards as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but but in the personal side of Visa and MasterCards, not too bad because you can get some Visa cards that earn you one Qantas point per dollar uh, mm -hmm. for the first $10,000. So then the, the decision comes down to how much money you spend in your personal life to match uh the caps so some 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 credit cards have that have a cap but what happens is that the first ten thousand dollars earns you one coins point per dollar but then it earns you half a coins point after that mm -hmm. so if you're spending just under ten thousand dollars then that card will earn you great points but if you're spending twenty thousand dollars per month then that card's not that good because only the first 10 gets one and the second mm -hmm. 10 gets half a point so then that's when you come to a little bit deeper science into picking the right card depending on your, your spending habits, whether you pay school fees and rent, uh, you can even pay things like that actually through your credit card these days. Even if you, they don't take the credit card directly, you can use these third-party payment aggregators and then they'll pay it for you and they'll charge you a fee. Um, so ultimately what I see it as an accountant in the background is it all comes down to how much does it cost you to get these points yeah. and then how much value are you going to get when you use those points. And generally you get double, double or triple value. So if it costs you 1%, then you basically can get 3% value back. Um, yeah, and I guess what I didn't mention is like, I believe is this using points of fly is the biggest perk in the world because points are really just designed for flying. Like you can use your points to get gift cards and stuff like that, but you get really bad value. I was so, going to ask, yes. Yeah. Like so I've got like a RoboVac. I've got a RoboVac or something. <laughs> and it, and it's like, you know, it's like 150,000 points or something like that. And it's like, I, I could have that sweet over to Singapore for less than that, yeah. right? And that RoboVac's like maybe $400 worth. So, that yeah. That's, that's the thing. So the way I, I sometimes say to people to make them understand, it's like having a $100 note, but only getting $10 of value mm. from that because you're not getting the maximum value. So when you've got points, you know, points are designed for flying. So business is the first class where you're going to get the business of the bank. And, and I've never, I might have only met one person that flew business in first and said, ah, oh, it's not such a big deal. But everyone else is like, yeah, this oh is. Oh my gosh! How you want you to can't go back. <laughs> you cannot go back. <laughs> and like I said, especially here in Australia, where it's like you've generally got an at least an eight-hour flight out, other than New Zealand and a few little islands. It's a long-haul flight, so you want to be comfortable. So yeah, it's yeah. it's an amazing experience. Awesome. Yeah. So we're talking about Amex, but not because I particularly love Amex, because they offer the highest points. So it's always yeah. about the numbers. Yeah. And I mean, Amex then obviously, like you say, it comes back to if you really want to get granular and if you really want to know, are you getting ahead with your points, which I think as a business owner, we ultimately will be. 
but there is typically, you know, that extra charge for Amex, which in the personal sense, if you're using an Amex card, that may not be, you know, you're going to get that little bit of a fee extra every time. But again, if you can contribute that into your points to get these upgrades, to get like an $8,000 flight, mm. just using your points, um, that's probably way out, outweighing those little yeah. extra Amex fees. That's right, yeah. And I've even done the whole calculation from end to end. So I'm sure so you've got an accounting there. background too, you just <laughs> yes. said. So, and the, you're the points guy, you know the numbers. <laughs> I've worked it out that on, on average, uh, as a business, if you paid all, all your things with, with, with card and you pay all your fees, and then you use those points to fly business class, it works out that you basically you're flying business class for half price. Because mm -hmm. how that works is the cost of getting the points and paying those fees is half the price of buying the same ticket with money. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that's how, that's why I'm still so into it because what, what else can you get for half price? Um, right. Yeah. Who doesn't love a deal? We all love a great <laughs> deal. And then a deal like this where you can fly at that pointy end of the plane, turning left instead of turning right. It is amazing. It's amazing, guys. The little pre-takeoff drinks, all the stuff. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. The hot towel sometimes. They give you a hot towel. Yes. <laughs> Anything you want, it's all there. Um, well, that's been awesome. Steve, where can people go and learn more about you, learn more about the services you provide so that they can be most effective when it comes to um, using their points and making sure they've got the most bang for their buck with their points and with their flights? Yeah, yeah. So my website is iflyflat.com.au. And I guess what we do is we offer, offer two services. One is it's a flight concierge. So if you have points already, but you just can't find flights or, or work it, we have a team, which is like a travel agency, but only points. And we mm -hmm. only book international business or first class flights. Uh, so so that's a, we, we do a, a booking fee on that. And the other service is actually a flight advisory, points advisory, how to earn the points for your business that's tailored to your travel needs and your spending style. Uh, so we have a video course and we have a one-to-one -one session. And all that's designed that if you're a business that's probably like two million plus turnover, then you're definitely spending the money that you, if you have a structure around points, then you basically will never fly economy again because mm -hmm. flying business class is so cheap. Yeah, so find me on iflyflat.com.au or if you're on Insta, on, uh, sorry, well, I'm on Instagram as well at iflyflat, but even better is LinkedIn at Stephen Huey, you find me there and I'm always on LinkedIn. Awesome. And guys, I just got to give you a heads up. We've just had April Fools at, here <laughs> at the time of recording. And for the last couple of years, I've seen Steve's done these amazing, um, a lot of effort April Fool things. They're a lot of fun. So there's a heads up for next April Fools. If you hear <laughs> going, oh, wow, I can earn points while I'm on hold on the phone. <laughs> If only I was on hold for an hour the other day with someone, it was like, ah, oh, you're killing me. Oh, and I did just want to emphasize here. So to be clear with everyone. So while you may have a business and you're accumulating these points for business you um, through your business, you don't have to use these points for business flights. Right, Steve? Yeah, you can use them for, for any, any, any flights. The key thing is having the points. Like so in the past, I've had business owners Ask me, well, I, I'm I'm not planning to fly a lot or, or all that stuff, and and or maybe sometimes using points to fly is a little bit difficult. But it's all the chicken or the egg. If you don't have the points, then you never get a, a chance to fly for cheap. And then the problem of can't get a flight doesn't exist. But but you never be able to fly a seven thousand dollar flight for five hundred dollars right. if you don't ever have the points. That's right. And then that, that $7,000 point uh, flight, um, that can just be one where you just want to go away and that's your holiday. It's your holiday with your partner. You're going off to some amazing location. You don't have to spend thousands on the flights because your points that you're accumulating through your business 
have done that for you so that then you can have that personal getaway recharge as all of us business owners need to come back refreshed and enjoy an amazing experience like that sweet absolutely love it yeah yeah steve thank yeah. you so much for your time today <laughs> this has been a lot of fun a bit different to our normal kind of business kind of talk but this is so important i wanted to share this with other business owners to really tap into this resource that's right at their fingertips as they're spending on their business one of the perks that we can enjoy from it so guys, go check out Steve, find him there on LinkedIn, check out iflyflat.com.au. Thanks again, Steve. Oh man, oh, get your points ready to fly. Absolutely. Man, I could just go on like back on that little uh, bed there at the moment. So it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks everybody. <laughs> Thanks everyone. That's it for today. Bye for now. See ya. Bye-bye.